Okay, perfect. This is actually what I want here. So, okay, why trade gaps? All right. <laughs> All right. Persevere through trials, right? All right. Why trade gaps? My name is Troy Peterson. I'm the president and trader of Gap Pitch Trading. I've been trading since 2001 full time, since 2006. Um, I run the Gap Edge Trading um, Services. Um, I work with various traders. I've worked with retail traders, institutional traders. Uh, I've worked with hedge fund traders. Um, I've been featured in Forbes, Money Show. I wrote articles for SOF and No Longer in Business, but um, Trading Markets, been featured in Active Trader. Anyways, so I, you can look me up. I'm out there on the internet. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and why I started trading gaps, specifically equity gaps, okay? I lived in Southern California, I'm married, uh, my wife, I worked a full-time job, I worked with a, a, a company that's a um, mission administrator, and um, yes, I agree. So I, I would work, I had like 350 clients, and I, I managed 401Ks, profit sharing plans, and I basically just saw all the money, and I was interested in trading, anyways, I started, started trading on my own, and I, I, got, I got involved in a swing newsletter, with um, CBS Market Watch, and um, anyways, made an enormous amount of money. Got severely lucky. I mean, severely lucky. I made six figures in like three month period. And I knew at that point that that I had done so well that I wanted to make a career out of this. So I began to pursue. But I wanted to keep my job because on the West Coast I was able to trade the open and still go to my job which gave me the flexibility of not having the income pressures that traders sometimes don't get past because they have the learning curve, right? Because a lot of traders want to learn how to trade, but they don't have the capital to outlast that learning curve. Because really, anybody can learn to trade. Really, eventually, you will figure this out. If you haven't figured it out, you will eventually. Um, but you just got to last the learning curve, and hopefully your money lasts as long as the learning curve. So with that being said, I particularly took an interest in gaps because um, they were a list that I could follow in the morning and I could get in and out of the markets within an hour and a half before going to work. So that's a brief bio of myself here. This is my website. But anyways, I want to tell you why I trade gaps. I'm going to know you guys are all here to find out why I trade gaps. Okay, so I'm going to give you some brief, brief uh, analysis of why. Well, first of all, we know that stocks are driven by news, right? That's why people put their money in a stock because either they're speculating news is going to happen or already news has occurred that's going to move the stock either up or down, right? Because nobody wants to get into a trade that's just going to go sideways, right? If you're long, you want your money to work for you and you want it to work for you ASAP. I mean, and that's what it's about for me. I wanted to get into something that was moving, you know, as, a, as I started off as a swing trader and then I became a day trader and now I'm both, but as a day trader specifically, I wanted to get in something that has volatility because volatility equals activity, equals liquidity, and equals potential profits if I know what I'm doing. So we know that um, stocks, uh, gaps, gaps create a shock and can create shifts in momentum. And by trading gaps, you're trading stocks in play. So I, I classify gaps as stocks in play, right? And so you're less likely to get, get controlled by some algorithm or program. Now, if you're a day trader, I'm sure you're aware of, of algorithms and programs and they're just basically robots that just kind of control the flow of, you know, of a stock that's just trading, you know, with the S&P 500. And I really didn't want to be part of that game. I really wanted to be, I want to trade with real people. I want to trade with real emotion. I want to trade where there's either something going down or something that's going up. And, and I want to trade against real traders because really when a stock gaps either up or down, there's people either in pain and they're getting out of the trade or they're either in a really a greedy moment and they're getting in the trade which creates momentum. So it creates an opportunity and money follows news. So we know that breaking news, you know, anything, any stock that you get into in the morning and it's got breaking news from uh, the night before or pre-market is probably going to make the local news at night because it's going to have enormous volume enormous activity and a lot of momentum. So that being said, I love the fact that gaps create a, a definable watch list each trading day because as a trader, a day trader specifically, I need a job assignment and my job assignment is I wake up in the morning and I specifically look for the stocks that are gapping 
in the pre-market with news, with volume, and finding out that there could potentially be some energy behind these equities because of what's going on with the news, right? I don't really read into that. I know the news is the event. And so that, that being said, you know, you have to wake up each day and either you're trading one vehicle like futures or you're trading, um, you know, Forex. But me specifically, I'm trading stocks at Gap and I know I have a watch list. Some days my watch list is big and some days my watch list is small. So it just kind of varies. But I like the idea that I have a definable watch list each day and I know what I'm looking for. Um, here's an example of a stock that just recently gapped down, which was AU, um, stock symbol. And here's the headline that broke out. They proposed a corporate restructuring. And now the stock closed in the 15s the night before and opened up into 13. Now you think that that in itself is a big move down, and so why would you go short that equity because it's already down so much? But knowing, you know, I produced the gap edge method, which is based upon prior price action. I went ahead and we went ahead and shorted this equity on the move, and so this is exactly what happened. So it dropped a dollar from the open and gave a nice trend. So we know that stocks give you a definable watch list backed upon momentum from news. Money flowing in, money flowing out, right? And so they they also classify and give you a trend intraday. So you're not getting just slopped around, right? By the programs, by the algorithms, honey. There's actually, these are what's happening in this particularly equity, right? This moment is the fact that this stock, I'm going to go back to the next slide, is uh, doing an enormous amount of volume because the institutions are selling this stock. So look out. Don't try to catch it. You may catch a little bounce. The scalpers on the, on the bottom catchers, they make, make a little money. But the big money in this trade was being short this equity from the open at 1362 all the way down to 1276. Now that, I love the fact that this stock had news that came out. It gave me a bias, right? I'm not second guessing because one of the biggest problems that traders have in trading is ambiguity, right? It's the uncertainty of what's going to happen. And see, your mind, psychologists say, your mind as a trader does not like uncertainty. And so I knew that I would feel those feelings in trading, and I wanted to get around that. And so I had to create a bias, right? I had to either be, wait, is this thing going to bounce? No, I wasn't thinking that way. I was thinking this thing has room to fall on the, on the daily chart. I see the next support level is way down here in the 12-something. So my bias is already to be on the short side, is the entry to get in, and then I've already already went around the uncertainty that um, that the stock is going to potentially give me from trading. So this this is a nice dollar move down. So this is one of the reasons I like to trade gaps. It trends down all day. Now here's another one that just recently gapped up, NPSP, um, pharmaceuticals. It had um, a previous day where it sold off from $29 to $26 and closed on the lows the day before it gapped up at 26. The next day, it gaps up into $31, I mean $30, and it makes a power move the whole day to 32. So anybody that was short that equity, which was that wide range red bar on the daily, woke up the next day with a massive headache in their account because the longs and the shorts were forced to cover. So another one gives you a bias, right? So basically I'm looking, what I'm looking for with trading gaps if you haven't figured it out already, I'm looking for trapped traders. I'm looking for trapped investors. I'm looking for, tra for trapped institutions. I'm looking for those that are hurting from this. I'm going to capitalize upon people's pain. As sick as it sounds, it's actually the way to do it. Because you, why trade with the herd, right? Trade when everybody's trapped, right? When everybody's, when everybody's anticipating something and it's going the other way, there's massive momentum. That's where the money is. And that's, that's what I do. I mean, I trade gaps. I mean, this is a nice power gap up. Classify this as a power gap up. And it, it, it gapped over a red bar. And you can see the headline there. Um, it's gapped up sharply in FDA news. So obviously, there's anticipation of this stock, you know, not getting some FDA approval for their drug is what I'm assuming. And then the news was changed the next day. And as you know, trading stocks, pharmaceuticals are the, one of the most volatile stocks you can trade in the market because it can be up one day, down one day, the next day. They create great trading vehicles if you know what you're doing. So, so they can see that this stock 
gapped up at 29.44 into the tw I mean, actually the 29 area, and then made a nice trend up the whole day, a 200, $2, $2.50 move. So this is another example of just the opposite with the first one I showed you on AU was a trending down on a gap down. This one is showing you a gap up that had a nice trend intraday on the upside. So they either trend up or they trend down and they provide nice trading vehicles for intraday trading action. Um, and, the, and the key thing here is also is the liquidity, right? I mean, because we know as traders, we're not going to get in and trade a stock that's only traded 300,000 shares per average a day. We need something that's moving with liquidity. This stock average daily is 2.1 million shares a day. On the day it gapped down, it did 12.3 million shares a day. That is expanded volume. That's not me and you trading that. That's what the institutions are saying goodbye. We're getting out of this trade. We're no longer going to support this equity, their news, their forecasts, their guidance, their earnings. Whatever it is, there's a reason, and you're just capitalizing upon it as a moment. So I would say, if you're not paying attention to gaps, you should. Now, you probably may have not classified the news at, in the day as just being a gap. You're just like, well, this one's moving because of news, and this and this. I can guarantee you, every single day the market opens, that I can, I can pretty much tell you when the mark, before the market opens, which stocks are going to make, make the headlines before the night close. First, by the gap. Second, by how much volume they've done in the pre-market that they're going to be a mover throughout the day. So, so you, you have, as, as I classify the name of my a company, it's called Gap Edge Trading because I clearly, I clearly define myself as having an edge in trading gaps because an edge is a higher, is, isn't, a, isn't a guarantee, it's a probability that, that something's going to go in my favor for the setup. doesn't mean I'm guaranteed it's going to win every time. I mean, as a trader, we only take losses, controlled losses, but I'm, ha I'm, I'm having a bias already. The gap's already given me a bias. Now I'm waiting for an entry, and then now I have a, a projection of where it could go with, with momentum because of the news behind the stock. Um, how do you scan for stocks? Yeah, I, I'll, take, I'll take questions at the end if you don't mind. That would be perfect because that way I can just finish the presentation here. So that would be perfect. So liquidity and volume. One of the most important things you need in trading as a trader. Now, in working with new traders, that's one of the first things i got to just get them to focus on is look for liquidity, right? You know, not, we don't want to trade something that's traded, you know, 300,000 shares a day. We want something that's got over a million. We want to be, we want to be able to get in the trade and be able to get out of the trade nicely, right? You don't want to, you can get in the trade easily, but if there's no volume there, you may have a little bit of difficulty getting out, you know? So liquidity is important to me, and that's w one of the reasons I like trading gaps. Now, here's another reason why I trade gaps is they provide nice trading ranges. Um, here's a gap down on LVS, it was last week, Las Vegas Sands Corporation. Um, what I classify it as being expanded trading range, right? You get an expanded trading range when the stock is giving you the nice move. And I can see that, you know, if you knew the stock had gapped at the open, which we did, it gave you uh, four potential sell setups. I've highlighted them in the yellow, um, where the retracements were on the five-minute chart. You could have got any, on any of those retracements and pulled some profit out of them, you know, and pretty much stayed in them for quite a while for a nice gain. Or you could have added and reduced and rode the position lower. So this is a $3 range with a nice gap down and providing you a nice sell setups on the five-minute chart. Now, at Gap is Trading, we trade gaps and we use a strict method of buying and selling signals. We're thinking, you know, do I have some kind of indicator? You know, do I have some kind of special secret sauce And what I do? Uh, wouldn't that be nice if I did? But you know what? And, and I'm, the, I'm the kiss. Keep it simple, you know. I keep it simple because the more I, I work with traders for, you know, four and a half years, almost five years I work with traders, and, it, you know, everybody has, like I brought up briefly before, has that problem with uncertainty, right? You just, you know, when you want to, you think you're going to take the trade, you need another indicator to tell you it's going to be okay, you know, the MACD or this and that, and the you know, RSI and this and that. To me, I'm just about price, price, price action, right? So that's my, what is a trading method or a system? I mean, what's defined what one is? It's a system of buys and sells, right? A system of buy and sell signals. You know, 
go, you know, that's why, you know, years ago, I never bought into it. I remember there was a commercial on TV that um, had red light, green light. You just buy this software program, and it tells you when to buy and when to sell. Now, wouldn't that be wonderful if we all knew when to just the light turn green, that we all just bought, and when the light turned red, we all would sell or position out of the trade. Now, I don't think those guys are even around anymore. I don't know. I have no idea. But uh, I'm assuming that method probably sold a lot of people some software but provided no profit. Um, so anyways, um, it, a system of buys and sells is, is providing you with an entry a buying it means getting long the position or selling selling short position. We're going to borrow the equity, return it, and cover back at, at a lower price, hopefully. Um, it's secondly, it's providing you a stop, which is a, a risk measured when you're wrong. So basically, you're having a controlled risk because basically, I don't, I don't, I first am a risk manager, and then secondly, I'm a trader because I'm I'm going to always calculate my risk, right? Because you know, like a guy that goes to Vegas. And plays the tables. You know he's a, he, he's he's he knows the odds, right? And the same with trading. You know you know your odds, and that's where you gather the odds in your favor. Is an edge is because you have a slight bias because of what the equity did before the market opened. So with gaps, again, they provide you a bias. They can potentially give you an edge to do something. That you have something you can do instead of just waiting to see and being a reactive trader, just kind of reacting to the to the trade when it opens and not really having a game plan. Because I mean, I you know people say you know use moving averages and 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 crossovers. You know, I don't honestly, guys, I don't do any of that stuff. I don't do any of the moving averages. I'm pure price. I read price, and you know, as long as you you do it long enough, you'll learn how to do it and figure it out it's not that difficult to do. Um, targets is huge for me. I mean, I see a lot of trades that set up, and my, set, my, my, my second question after looking at a trade for an entry is, what's my target? Is there a potential target in the, in the equity? And if the target is like one to one from the risk, no, it's not a trade. Two to one, we consider three to one, we got something setting up here for us. So you got to have a system, a trading system to, to evaluate. To, to be a trader, you, you know, because there's so many people that do a shotgun approach to tra trading. Um, questions that a trading me methodology should answer is where where do I enter my position, long or short? You know, where are you going to get in? Are you, are you trading off the one minute? Are you trading off the two minute? Are you trading off the tick chart, 100 tick chart, 200 tick chart? Are you trading off the five minute, the 15 minute? Are you trading, you know, long or short? You know, what are you trading off of? I mean, what time frame? Are you, what, what method are you using to get short? And why? Why are you getting in on the five minute versus the two minute? Or why are you not getting in on the 15 minute or the 60 minute? These are things that you, you incorporate with your methodology in how you'd want to you know, trade the market. This is the only place in the entire world where you could take as much money as you have to trade the markets and not have any requirement to do it besides having money, right? Anything else you do, you know, to be a doctor, dentist, lawyer, anything with credentials, you have to have some sort of education. Now, why is it with trading that people don't get educated and they want to be penny, they want to be teeny, penny, uh, penny wise or penny tight and not educated wise? They want to pay the hard knocks. Now, don't get me wrong, you can learn how to trade the markets on your own over time. It just may take a little longer. So. Where do I place my stops so I don't get whipped out of the trade? Exactly. That's a very good question because I can guarantee you that um, a lot of the programs written in the market can uh, they, they do hunt for your stops. So you got to have a you got to figure out, study, know where they're not to be placed at, have an ideal location. It's not too wide, but not too tight. And then where do I take my profits and show profits? These are all questions that um, that you should you, you should you know have incorporated in your method. Um, well, the, what I teach my traders to do is to read price action in areas, and um, so little. It's it's somewhat you would say we trade patterns, but not not so necessarily. That's not the first thing we trade. We trade a area first, and then we trade a pattern in alignment with the area. So I teach my traders how to read price action in an area, and then try to get follow through into the action. There's a nice little diagram of actually trading, getting short, target, all that good stuff. So anyways, gap-based trading methodology uses only one indicator in day trading. 
and even swing trading because I do swing trades too. Um, it's prior price action. I mean, I look and I'm going to show you some examples here. Maybe some of you know this. Um, it's it's so simple. It's maybe profound, right? Um, prior price action or reading price action is what I am a fan of. And price it doesn't matter what we think, what our indicator says, because if someone's willing to pay for it at this price and they show you price support there. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter anything else. It doesn't matter what we think or the Fibonacci's are telling us or the MACD. So here's an example of Twitter, um, TWTR, um, showing you an example of a prior price action. And what I would look for is um, now this stock opened um, lower and started to sell off. Now you see the yellow area. Uh, right into the uh, see it's, just, it's dropped down it hasn't broke and then it just went flurry two two red bars down right it, what happened there was there was a there's a support area that was created in that people thought the stock was going to bounce and then it, they busted them out right so that's what I would classify as as being called the longs piled in here for reversal it failed creating what, what I would technically call intraday supply right because if you look for failures I call them like a bruise right I, I technically see them as a bruise now you may not have got that short there or look to play the failure there hypothetically would just say you didn't get it right but then you saw after the fact that it sold off so you would wait until it came back up to that intraday supply level or the bruise area and you would look for retracement to get short because you can see there, it retraced back up on low volume, and then what got a sporadic drop down and dropped from 50, 42 to 40, 40, 50 and change into that area. So it's a very nice thing. So this is what I technically would call um, prior price action. So using a failed area, either of a, I would technically call like a buy, a support area where traders are going to pile in. Because it basically, my job as a trader successfully is to is to trade um, trade against a trader. I'm, I'm looking to trade against traders that are anticipating moves, and if, when those moves fail, I'm looking to capitalize on them. Now, I look for those moves intraday within the category of my gap list, right? In the category of stocks gapping up, or in the category of stocks gapping down. So, because I know that this stock's going to have a lot of liquidity, a lot of traders are jumping in here, a lot of new traders. I mean, let's face it. The market has an enormous ability to attract new blood. It just does. I mean, there's always new people coming to the market. Now, if, if the statistics are correct, and we probably all heard them the same, that 90% of traders lose on trading, and 5% break even, and 5% make money. I've heard those statistics forever. Now I don't know if, how valid they are, if 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 they're if they're new, if they're different or not. But if that is true, then it says the odds are really against you in doing this endeavor as a trader. So there has to be something, and and, and when I started doing this years ago, training, I would tell myself there has to be something that sets me aside, that makes me different than at ninety percent. I said, what is that going to be different? I'm not going to, you know, do the moving average thing. I want to. I want to have a skill set that um, I want to be able to read price because I want to talk about the, the traders on the floor a long time ago. They'd be able to read the price action, and you know, and then there's no longer really a floor anymore. But so in reading price action, so basically you're looking for you're looking you're waiting for the stock to set up for you in something that's happened and look for it to trade back into that area. So look. So if they flip the stock. The other side, and flipped it upside down, it would just be like a long position, where the stock failed to go lower and held the spot, and then you caught the retracement to the upside. So it's just it's just exactly the same way. Um, you just basically look for price confirmation in an area that was either a failed failed support level or um, a failed a failed uh, resistance uh, resistance level. So the prior price action was the entry short, and this is this is a perfect example of doing this. Okay. Now here's one that was that gap down yesterday, General Mills GIS, and it was a beautiful gap that I traded myself. And now you can see 
all the way the, all the way to the left side. This is a, a two minute chart. It says 120 seconds. It's two minutes. You see that the stock um, looked like it was going to hold that area at the open. Well, it sliced through it and went all the way down to 5078. Okay. So if you particularly got short at the open, you had a nice move down. You caught the first move down. You probably trailed out down into the 50s somewhere, somewhere down there. You wouldn't probably got the exact low, but somewhere in that area. But then as it retraced back up into that failed area from the open, your potential, you're looking to stock that area, that yellow area highlighted. Again, prior price action equals supply zone to short. And then boom, a nice little drop down there, traces, does the same thing in the after, late afternoon, back up into 51.48. So really, really, it's kind of a simple way to look at things because you're just looking at things that have already occurred, right? Now, I do have setups where we do get in at the open, where we get in a one minute short, we would kind of short this one, the one minute open, got the quick drop. I mean, there, there is those type of entries, but this is kind of more, I would take this more as an entry level um, trading that I would take my new traders, that people that are just biting their teeth and learning to trade the markets and that how they would trade, you know, something like this. So this is, this is what I want to teach. So, so the gap ed method, which I coined myself, has eight gap tactics where I classify and each, each gap tactic has gap ups and gap down. So, you know, a power gap has a power gap up, power gap down, trend line break is a gap up, gap down. And you can kind of get the gist of what those mean because, you know, they specifically say what they are. So um, the method is based off of teaching you where to spot the buyers and sellers. I mean, because really that's all that really matters in trading is knowing where potentially where the buyer could come in and support the equity or the seller would come in and sell the equity. Because really, it doesn't really matter what we do. Unless you got like a, you know, a $10 million account and you're going to move the market. I mean, really, all of us here, we're just, you know, we're, we're trading the markets. We can't really move the markets. When a stock's doing 12 million shares a day, you know, you could take, you know, one or two, 3,000 shares of the trade or 500 shares, whatever your account size is. You're not going to have a huge impact on the trade. So what you want to be able to do as a trader is you want to find out where the trades go. Now, as, later on, I'm going to get into the presentation. I'm going to show you a little bit about the swings and how effective those are also. So we day trade the gaps, and then we look for continuations on the swings. So basically, we're looking for reading price action. Now, teaching you how to identify key areas of selling to be short or buying to go low. So really, you're, you're just looking for an area to identify on a chart to go long or to go short. Very simple. Um, we teach you how to objectively trade and stay in the moment. Again, if you've been trading for any bit of a time, you understand the, one of the major hurdles of trading is a, you know, indicators, you know, if you use a lot of them, they're very subjective, right? In the eye of the beholder, right? Because it looked good at that moment, and then, you know, the trade, you get in the trade, and it fails and goes over, and the indicator changes. So anyways, you want to be objective. You want to learn how to stay in the moment. You'll never get ready for your emotions. I don't care what anybody says to you on trading. You are a human being. You'll have emotions. It's how you deal with the emotions which affects your trading. Are you going to act on them? Anyways, this is a whole other presentation. But anyways, so gaps offer specific risk parameters for potential profit. Um, they provide you a defined gap list, uh, trending intraday action, liquidity, you're becoming a partner with an institution. If he's buying, you're buying. If he's selling, you're selling. So risk parameters. And as a trader, you know that your job, number one, is to be a risk manager. So anybody that I've ever met trading, now we're with traders all around this world, and the, even traders that have a lot more money than me, and, but they didn't use risk parameters, they're no longer trading. So risk parameters is, very, is what you want to use for stops to get in and get out. If you're wrong and right, you get out. Anyways, the top reasons traders fail, first of all, is no method or system of trading, the shotgun approach. I mean, if you have no system or no method to what you're doing, I'm going to just give you one piece of wisdom here. It'll be worth your whole time of being in this presentation is stop. Don't trade. Figure it out. Get a hold of something. But do not have the shotgun approach. If what you're doing is somewhat of a thing, but it's not working, stop trading. Just you got to you got to get a hold of some kind of method or system of buying and selling that fits your personality. Now that's the very that's the key there, right there, is you know what I do may not fit your personality, and but it fits me. 
and it fits other traders that I work with. But really, the you, I mean, I, I think that one of the biggest things as a trader is uh, trading is a journey of introspection. Um, you want to learn about yourself? Start trading money. You'll find out a lot about yourself in a, in a, in a very quickly fashion. Um, and also the top reason the traders fail is over trading. Taking 10, 20, 30 trades a day is, is, is going to make your broker really happy and uh, probably you not very, uh, not very wealthy, so over trading. And uh, thirdly uh, would be too tight of stops, right? Um, a lot of traders that are new get into trading and they want to just keep it really tight because they don't want to lose any money and if they lost some money it wouldn't be good their wife might get mad so they keep their stops really tight so two tight stops is not a good thing but stop is a good thing but too tight is not good um, so what I do with my traders now I ran the gap edge trading for four and a half years I just uh, just recently just switched the gap edge trading room over to a, a, a private Twitter account where I have all my traders that have been with me in my room it's more of an effective way to a trade and because all they really care about is the market comments and the trade. I, I particularly trade no more than four trades a day. And, and today I just did one trade. So I'm not about over trading. I'm, I'm about quality over quantity. And as you become more proficient trader, the less you trade, the more you'll make. I guarantee it. So wide enough stops to avoid getting whipped out is another thing. So too tight and then too... And you want to have a little bit of wiggle room in there. But the idea is when you're wrong, you get out, okay? And also teaches you where to hold for maximum profit. You need to know where to get out. I mean, just because you just made 200 bucks or you made $1,000, but your potential is to make 5000 or, you know, 500 and you don't realize it, that you could stay in the trade, that will, that's a huge hang-up for traders because just because you got profitable for five minutes, and the trade has a room to drop lower if you're short you want to maximize it so the key to really trading is to maximize your winners right you want to learn how to maximize and a method will teach you that how to maximize them so but now I'm not here to, to car sales you I'm not here to tell you I'm not here to tell you that anything is easy with trading I'm not here to tell you that because it's not I'm, I'm gonna say that there's no shortcuts and I'm sorry to say it there is none I'm going to tell you, no matter what trading strategy you learn, it will require some things from you. If you're not willing to give it, I would recommend keeping your money in your bank account. Screen time. It's going to require for you to pass that learning curve, to sit in front of the computer and to see how things work, the ebbs and flows of the market. So you will have to do that. I mean, that may take you, it could be short for some, it could be long for others. It may be a couple months, maybe a year. I don't know. Everybody's different. It just depends on your learning capacity. And then thirdly, I mean, secondly, patience. I mean, uh, some days there's just nothing to do. Some days there's not a trade to take. And, and some days there's a lot to take. So screen time, patience, and absolute discipline. Those three requirements, screen time, that means you're, you're, you're spending your time studying. You're, you're there before the market opens. You're there during the market day. You're studying after hours. You're being patient about your entries. You're managing your, your uh, you're managing your profits, and you're enforcing absolute discipline. Honestly, I mean, this may sound like I've run a trading room for four and a half years. I I I, I, just, I know the traders. I I I honestly, I mean, I call trades on my Twitter alert account. But honestly, I I really feel that. I mean, I may be working against the system here, but I think trading rooms kind of are a a bad place to learn how to trade. I think you need some kind of guidance because, first of all, a lot of trading rooms, they have people in there that are posting trades after the fact, and, and you never know what they lose, right? There's, and, I, and I pretty much killed that in my room. I'd say, if you're going to post a trade that you won on, you got to post when you took it, before you took it, because everybody brags about their winners. So I would say, because, and then you're going to, you beat yourself up because you didn't take the trade, and so it's just a cycle, trading is so psychological that, um, you know, you maybe find one or two traders you trade with. I would recommend finding a trading buddy, trade with them. I think trading rooms is, is kind of like a lot of hype, a lot of, a lot of. you know, I work for traders, I said again, but I had a pretty quiet trading room, so it was pretty quiet. Um, but anyways, screen time, patience, absolute discipline, I believe that those three numbers, those three ingredients will bring you success.
So I'm sure that's not the thing you wanted to hear today. I'm here to sell you the lucky, the lucky indicator or to sell you something that's kind of bells and whistles. And if you did this moving average or if you just followed this MACD. Listen, I traded, I, I woke up on the day of 9-11 ready to trade. And the twin towers were going down, and I quit trading for like six months because you know the market tanked after then, and I went back to trading. I've traded two bear markets. I've traded. I've traded two bull markets. I've been when the money was sliding down the hill in 2008, Lehman Brothers, and you couldn't short these stocks. And uh, I mean, I've seen it all, man. I mean, we're in a great bull market right now. Who knows when it's going to end? I'm not saying it's going to end tomorrow. Or maybe it does. I have no idea. But there, you have to have a trading method that can trade bull markets and bear markets because I guarantee you nobody was ready for the 2008 fall when it came and uh, there was a short frenzy that we could that you could have made a lot of money on if you knew what you're doing anyways program for success now I have put together a program for success if training gaps is something that you're interested in maybe it fits your personality I have taught a full seminar a whole day seminar eight hours online it's recorded on demand um, I also do my Twitter feeds with my calls moderated by myself. So it's a, it's a private Twitter account. With um, so basically, you, you, to follow me, you have to pay to follow me, and I would I would allow you to follow me. And I basically just put on my trades, and I basically just I I do a video in the morning, and I tell my traders this is what we're watching, and then I make the trade calls. I give you the entry, I give you the stop, and I give you the target, and if I give you the management, I'm basically taking all my years of experience trading you and just kind of showing you what to do and it works okay now I also do weekly coaching sessions with my traders also so that's my program of success I'm not here to sell you that trading is easy I'm just trying, to, trying to tell you we don't have losses but we win more than we lose that's the goal we go home with money in our pocket week in month out so here's what I do with my traders Twitter alert service. It's not very much money. I provide high odds, low risk entries to stop targets and management, all focused on stocks and gap. This service takes second guessing our trading, focused on clear setups, very objective approach to trading. All setups will be based on the five or 15 minute charts, trading with the stock the gaps. You can expect to get one to four trade alerts a day. Now, with the being of Twitter, there's several ways you can get alerts. You can get through your phone. You can get it through uh, Chrome Notifier, which alerts you immediately when I post into Twitter. Um, so anyways, it's only $100 a month, but I'm offering a special to anybody that comes in today. You can do the first month for $49.99 and half off the first month. So no big deal. I mean, it's to me, I love helping traders win. And, and a, a trade that I'm going to call is going to be a trade that, that I'm going to put my money on. So you can do a trial. Also, now here's an example of one I called um, just recently. It was rate R A T E, and you can see this at the very bottom of the screen. You can see rate trade alert long at 10.96, stop 10.62, target 12 dollars. Okay, all right. So we, you can obviously the next thing, and it, it was 19 minutes ago, and it was like 12 minutes. It said trail 11.05. That means run the money. Trail 11.010, trail 11.15. This is what I'm providing my traders. I'm telling them what I'm doing. 11.30, 11.40, 11.45. We didn't get to target, but that's fine. It didn't go all the way to target. So all out rate, 9.45. You can see the trade lasted uh, 15 minutes, uh, you know, less than 15 minutes. But anyway, this is what I do. This is this is all on my Twitter uh, Twitter account there. So. You can see those nice calls, nice trade alerts. I got about the arrows there. Anyways, there is the actual chart. It's a 300-second chart, which is a five-minute chart. You see that we saw rate was selling off. It was selling off because I think the CEO stepped down or they're replacing the CEO. It's a real simple entry we got off of. There. I looked on the 60-minute chart and there were some there were some support levels in there on the five on the 60-minute, and we looked for reversal and we got in over the five-minute bar. And then we get the trade ended up showing out at 11:45. I mean, once we're in the money, we're going to stay in the money, right? That I mean, there's no reason if you're making good money in a trade that you let the trade go against you and you become a loser. If worst case scenario, you let it become a break-even trade. But anyways, this is an example of a trade that I did with, with my Twitter alerts for my traders. Got in there, entry, and we stopped out. We, we trailed out in that area. 
Uh, here's the one we did yesterday. I don't know if you guys pay attention to um, paid attention to um, Adobe E A A D B E. Had a gap down yesterday, and on their earnings. That, now, when I woke up in the morning in the pre market, I was like, "This is going to be the one I'm going to trade today." Now, the see the see the um, the, the highlighted color area it says post market when earnings came out. That was in the after hours. Now. That particularly was it had a violent reaction down. You see how it sold off. I, I keep that area highlighted to show you. I'm paying attention to these post market trading. First of all, reason why is because there's real volume there. So that means there's real traders there. So post and pre market trading is a very important, um, you know, price action that I pay attention to if there's volume. So I knew potentially that the stock held in the 67, right? So that potentially could be my target because in the post market it held in that area. Well, anyways, the first five minutes, the stock ripped up, right? Bounced up a nice five-minute bar. The second five-minute bar gave a huge topping tail. We were on it. Once it broke the 68.42 level, we got in at 68.37. Our stop was over high today. Our target was in the 67. We trailed out down into the lows into the 60.34, 67.34. So, anyways, another example of a, of a trade. So, if you're looking to learn how to trade gaps, I'm all I'm doing is I, I provide the education with the gap seminar, and I provide you with the trades that go in hand in hand with what I teach. So, I'm not trying to say I'm going to sell you an indicator. I'm just saying, hey, look, study, look what these setups, study them. This is what a gap's doing. This is potentially what could happen in this trade, and that's exactly what happened. So, my course I teach is the day trading gaps. It's a proprietary strategy that I produced myself over the years of trading gaps. Uses to align ideas with big money moving markets, and that's the concept of trading gaps. Is is you're aligning your your trade setups with the big money, where money is moving in an equity or money is moving out of an equity. Now, this for this instance, the last one I showed you. Um, so, yeah, Dan, um, I got, I, I'll post that on the, um, oh, there it is right there at the top right there. You can post, click on that link. So um, what I've done is the big money is, you, you're just following the big money. I mean, I, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way to say this, is you're like a parasite, right? You're just hopping on the back of these big banks that are dumping the stock, and you're going short with them. Because let's face it, we can't do it ourselves. So... I'm just going short because that stock has gapped down on negative earnings, right? They may have given a forecast of, of being lower. And so the momentum to this stock was to the downside because I've seen the post-market trading, I've seen the action. So anyways, the match in the gaps course is not purely conceptual. It's a step-by-step -step method for producing repeatable results. Basically, every day, I'm, I'm almost going to say 99% of the time, there's a gap. Oh, does the link not work? I'll have to look into that. Sorry. It should work. I Anyways, so I'll provide that for you in a minute. Um, so basically, um, we're providing you a step-by-step -step system for producing multiple results. And um, it's on demand, 22 chapters, eight hours of teaching, gap ups, gap downs, unlimited viewing. So if you buy the seminar, you can view it for the rest of your life. I don't care. Um, I send you, I ship you a manual. 300 page color man that you own, you have ownership of, it's to view with the seminar. And, and then I also created a DVD that I sell online now. It's called Access to Reading Price Action with Gaps. And basically that was kind of the missing, it's $49.99 for the first month, half off. It's normally $9.99 first month after that. So I'll go over that in a minute uh, if you guys don't mind waiting. So, I created a reading price action with gaps, and that goes over in very detail what uh, happens in the post and pre-market. Now you need to pay attention to that because uh, you're not going to find information like this out anywhere. I promise you, you will not find information on trading gaps with post and pre-market. Um, so, access to reversal plays is is um, is something I incorporated into the gap method. But it's not a gap. It's basically it's, it's like a gap that happens intraday, but momentum. Like news comes out on a stock that's ripping up or selling off, and you're looking to get long or short into that move, okay? And so provide a one-month Twitter. For, for people here, I'm going to provide you three months. So if you, if you buy the seminar, you're going to get three months access 
to um, to the Twitter alert. So the whole online trading course is eight ninety nine ninety nine, and you get three months of Twitter service with that. And you get coaching with me, which I do in weekly, and we could do one on one, and unlimited support and phone and email with me. Okay, so I'm very accessible. So I will I will get. Can we get to all the questions I have about? 18 minutes left. Almost done with the slides, and we'll go over the questions. Swing trading. Now, as a gap trader, here's I have a swing newsletter that I do. Right, it's a swing newsletter that comes out nightly. It has texting alerts on it, email alerts on it, and um, this is a trade we actually took. Right, it's called American Eagle Outfitters. You see the the uh, the big yellow volume. It did 20 over 29 million shares, and only does 5. 0.4 million shares. So see the enormous amount of volume it did again. So what this is telling you, right? If you don't pay attention to this, if you guys, it's um, no. Anyway, anyways, so I'm trying to. So what this is telling you is telling you these institutions that bought this stock into 12 and 13 dollars, they were not buying to day trade it. They were buying to for higher prices. And so, who do you think drove the price up to 14 dollars? Anyways. We got in at 13 on the swing and sold it up into 14, sold out into 14. So it's a very nice swing trade and entry long. And then here's another one we did on X-Steel. Now this one we didn't, I can, I can say we did not get the full ride because we got trailed out. But my original target was $45, okay? So we got long over 33.50 and we trailed out into 38 on this one. So another example if you're not paying attention to gaps, if you gleam anything, if you don't sign up with me, I don't care. I'm just saying, pay attention to gaps because you're missing a lot of money that can be made trading. Doesn't give you a link. Okay. I'll, I'll give it to you guys. So here's the Swing Training Newsletter. It's $149.99 a month, five-day trial if you want to sign up. And um, let's go back to, so the link does, let me just double check and see what's going on here. So there is my website. And for some odd reason, let me check out. I'm, I apologize. I, I thought I had the um, trading pub. So the link doesn't work. Okay. Anyways, trading pub. What I can do, I can take your questions now. If you guys have questions, I'll take your questions. What stop sign are you use? Um, okay, Dan, I use uh, TradeStation, so I use um, I use their um, their scanners. They're just manual scanners. And you know what, guys? There's a really great website to use. It's called the Nasdaq.com website, and um, I use their uh, website. For, um, for some reason, the training pub. I, I'll, I'll I use their website because they they I'll show it to you right now. What I'll do is I'll fix that. Um, if you guys don't mind, I'll fix the um, I'll fix that link. Okay. Do I use options? Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't go over options. Yes, I use options. Not for day trading. I use options for the swing trade newsletter. We, we do spreads, we do debit and credit spreads, and we do directional uh, calls and puts. So my, my, my swing newsletter is, uh, is very diversified in a sense. Traders that trade with just equity positions, that they want to go long or short the equity with their money. And then I also provide the same setup, but with a directional call or put. And then, then some want to do the credit debit spreads. And those are less risky and uh, limited profit. I also do those. So if I call a trade long, like an X deal, I'll give them the equity long with the entry, stop, and target. I'll give them the directional call to go long, and then I'll also give them the uh, the credit spread or debit spread, whichever one we want to do for the for the call. So yeah, we do use those, Ken. And how much is the trading cost? The trading course is is eight ninety nine. Eight ninety nine ninety nine. And of course, yes, all my gaps are based off, uh, all my swings are based off gaps, Mike. Yes, they all are. I mean, that's that's my forte. I, I know gaps. I mean, if you guys go back and, and uh, let, me, let me show you on my chart. Let me close this. I'll do projection on, um, 
let me switch switch charts and I'll show you um, I'll show you some swings. Hold on one second. Pull up my projector. I'm going to show you. Show you this one second here. I'm going to fix that link real quick if you guys don't mind. And some reason this really slow. Um, yes, I, what I, I keep track of is I keep track of the R's. We call them risk amounts. So, so basically, we risk one R on a trade. So every trader has a set risk amount with their R. How do you address the expression all gaps are filled? I think that expression, Ken, is more for futures. I think over time, eventually, I think over time that eventually they um, they all they all get filled. I mean, of course, I mean eventually, you know, maybe a year, maybe two years, but no, not with not with day, not with equities. I don't believe so. I mean, maybe over time, but I wouldn't think in the end per se. No, I wouldn't think so. I think there's a whole course or a whole trading action you could do with futures and they get filled. The high percentage probability of futures being filled. Um, see after five minute, fifteen minute, take an entry trade entry for a swing. Yeah, you can, Roger. I I, I particularly go off the daily for my for my traders on my newsletter. Okay, I'm gonna build the projector up. And I have I have 12 minutes left here, so I want to get to everybody's question. In a swing letter, how many open positions would you have at a time? Right now, it it kind of varies. Um, it kind of varies at times, but right now we have we have three going. We're in two, and one's one's close to triggering. One's, one's close to triggering. Fixing this trading, this link here. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm fixing the, the web link. I apologize here for that. That should, that should work now. Okay, I'm loading up my, 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 um, my screen here to show you. Um, Okay, so Yahoo, just to show you for an example, when the institutions take a trade, um, this was, this was um, right here. This is when I first started my swing newsletter. We went long Yahoo here on this gap up, right? 71 million shares traded and it broke over a resistance level. Now if you go back and look at Yahoo, that was the beginning of a big move on Yahoo. See that gap up? It's massive. I mean, um, so gaps really can give you a hint. Yes, I will send you. I will send you an email with instructions, videos, all the good stuff. Um, what was another one? Another one was um, KKD. Was another one. So these are some swing examples, right? Um, Krispy Kreme right here. See this where my pointer's at was a gap up we called in our swing letter. So some of these can kind of be core trades. Yes, I do have, Peter. You can email me and I'll send it to you. Uh, Troy at gapistrading.com. Uh, when you choose a gap to trade, what criteria are you looking for? For example, proximity of, of relative strength. Yes, Karen, there is a lot of uh, a lot of variables in trading. I mean, it's obviously, we want to keep it as simple as possible. I mean, if the market's ripping up, is ripping up in the morning, and you got a stock that's selling, gapping down and selling off, I want to make note of that stock that's weak, right? Because I want to beat up the weak stock. You know, you want to beat up the weak guy. So yeah, you want to pay attention to relative strength, well, the weakness. I have a whole chapter on that in my seminar, going over market internals, paying attention to, you know. You know the uh, you know the tick, the extremes in the tick. 
you know, a thousand plus tick in the New York Stock Exchange tick on the upside or downside. Those are kind of points that maybe the market could turn up or down. So you want to pay attention to those. There's a, there's a lot of variables, and I've and I've done, you know, I I also incorporate um, multiple time frame time frame analysis where I'm ana analyzing, you know, the daily, the weekly, the 60 minute. The five minute. I'm, 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 I have, you know, I have eight trading monitors, so I, I've got everything. I'm going to view everything in its analysis to know exactly where things are going, where things are at, and I want to know exactly, you know, if this stock's going to, you know, has support or resistance. Like today, for example, this isn't on a big trade, but um, we shorted uh, uh, Rite Aid this morning in, in my Twitter alerts. We, we shorted Rite Aid. We didn't make a ton out of it, but as you can see, it, it dropped the whole day, so we trailed out of it. But um, that's a bull. That's a bearish gap down on Rite Aid, R A D. Did I? No, I did not uh, take any pristine courses. No, unfortunately, no, I don't know any much about them. Um, but you can see now Rite Aid sitting on some demand here also. So R A D. If it's not, and do you have a rating system? I do not. And I do not I, basically. I cat. I want to categorize the gap based upon one of the eight gap tactics I have. Um, you know, a power gap up, a shock gap, and basically I'm looking for intraday supply and demand, or bigger. You know, 60 minute or daily intraday supply and demand. Like I'm using, I'm using prior price action to determine my entries, or maybe a point of exhaustion, like to fade the gap. You know, or we call it unpro gap. No, you know what? That's the um, 200 MA. I use the 200 MA on the daily for the swings. So I really, I really like. Um, I, I really have. I kind of incorporate the 200 MA as part of my criteria for swing. Here's one that we got swing short without the 200 MA. We were swing short. Um, see this gap down in, on Wings and Sonoma, right there. Uh, we got short intraday, and then we trailed out. About a, about, a, about a buck something, buck 40 or something out of it. But um, uh, Cree was another one we got short. This was a nice one on Cree. We got this yellow one here. We got short Cree there. We chilled out down there. We also took this Cree short here to the right, this yellow area. And then we, we ended up chilling out on uh, down into the 41 level. So so gaps will tell you a lot. Um, one that gapped yesterday was RAX, RAX. Problem is with it, it is in some support. Um, so I don't think it's a good candidate. It's in a range to get there. What are your thoughts about CLR? Okay, let's take some looks at those. Um, CLR, let's look here. Well, got defended there on that support level. See how even they had 6.9 million shares traded. So it is at some support, some demand, as we would say. It's got a strong weekly. I think if it closes below that weekly pivot, it's, that's what I call as a landlock there. You know what I'm saying? It's a landlock because it has some supply overhead and it has some demand underneath of it. So it's, it wouldn't be my favorite to trade it intraday because of this support level over here to the left. I always tell my traders, look left. Like, you know, you tell your kids, look left and right for the cross the street. How can you show gap trades that did not work? How can I show? Hmm, let's think of one. Well, some don't work. I mean, sometimes they get defended. The gaps, the pivots get defended. Oh yes, I was going to show you a great, a great tool to. Um, use for the. Um, Training after to find stocks that are gapping is go to the Nasdaq.com after hours. This is where I get my my gap list in the after hours, right? Most they do it for the New York Stock Exchange and Nasdaq and Amex, so you can use that in the after hours. So I use that in the after hours. So Nasdaq.com extended dash trading for after hours. It's a, it's, a, it's a good good website to use. What's the difference between your gap training? I don't. Honestly, DS, I don't know. I have no idea. I did not know. I don't. I do not. I'm not familiar with. Them. I've had people come in my room that were part of them. I mean, that traded with them. So, unfamiliar. 
when it when it gaps open and immediately runs in the opposite direction, do you maintain your current bias and stop out, or do you change your bias and stop? Well, if when it opens immediately and runs, I'm probably not going to be in it at the open if it runs, because what I'm looking for is I, I'm either looking for um, you know like a sell you know to, to a retracement to get short or long. And do I change my bias? Yeah, I mean, if a stock has, you know, been like, you know, say it gapped down and it started to go lower and started to get a little bearish, made a new low, but then it works itself out back up, up into the range of the stock and then takes out the high of the day, I wouldn't even short that stock. That stock's probably going to retrace and fill a gap. So, yeah, I mean, there's certain things I watch for, like opening range high, opening range low, off the five-minute chart, off a gap up or gap down. Me, I've been I've been trading gaps since 2003. Is it possible? Well, John, if it was, we'd be all real rich, wouldn't we? No, I'm, in seriousness, so you can potentially, you know, uh, you know, look at the earnings list, and you know, me myself, I've been trading a long time. I can probably, I know the stocks like to gap, so like Guild Sciences will probably gap on earnings. You know, Tesla. You know, Apple. You know, these momentum stocks have high betas. You can probably pick. You know, a lot of traders will trade this. You know, trade uh, trade options into earnings, and you know, have some strategies for that. What is the price target heading up for Apple? Well, you know what? Here's a funny thing. You say that when Apple was back at 700, right? Um, and before it did the uh, the split there. Um, you can you can go to TraderPlanet.com, and I write a, I write a weekly article for them and call trade ideas to them. So I give a lot of, um, this was, I wrote an article back when it was at 700, and um, this gap down right here, I, we call the swing short, because the gap down broke through the support level, and it failed to go higher. This used to be 700, by the way, and it did reverse splits at 100 now. So um, see that area? It broke lower. So we called a short, and uh, it was a very nice short, and obviously now it's a different price, but. Um, 90. We got. I think we got short like below the low, so we short under 90 there, 91, and then got it down to 70, 73, 74. But now, I mean, I mean, Apple is just you know, if Apple gets over these highs, it, you know, it's it's got a nice support level. I mean, if you look at the weekly. I mean, I'm not short in something that's uh, in an uptrend unless it gets you know to a point of an exhaustion or downtrend. The link does not work. Okay, well, we're going to fix that. I got one minute left. I'm going to fix it. So, yes, here we go. I got it. I got it. Can I type it in the, I'll type it in the, um, the announcement. How do we type that in the announcement? Fixed it. There could be enough errors today. Okay, I'll type it. I'll type it in here, and you can share it. Yeah, I apologize, guys. I haven't used Omnovia for over a, over a, over a year and a half now. Um, but I, I enjoyed talking about gaps. I hope I answered all your questions. I know my time's up here. So um, thanks again for everybody for coming out. And uh, listen to me talk about gaps. It's my passion, obviously. So, if you do sign up, um, I'd love to, you know, see what you like about gaps. Kick the tires. See what we do. Um, check out our check out our check out our gap course. It's reasonably priced for someone that doesn't have a method. You can learn how to make that money back very quickly. You got to highlight the bottom part of it, guys. It, it looked like the, the link didn't capture it. You got to get the whole just highlight it with your your cursor there. For some reason, didn't get get it. Yeah, it's funny. It is. It's funny because my time's up. All right. Thanks, everybody.